Okay, we're back. We're live. It's the 10 o'clock block with uh, Talking Tax with Tom Yamachika. And indeed, it seems quite, quite appropriate that we have Tom with us. Tom Yamachika on Talking Tax with Tom. Hi, Tom. Hi, Jay. Thank you for having me on the show. Absolutely. So let's talk about what's going on here. You know, we've, we've had earlier discussions about the CARES money and the money from Washington and whether the legislature and the governor were doing the right thing with it. Um, but some of it really hasn't even been accounted for. Can you talk about that? Well, um, and, and, it, and it's interesting because uh, the, the federal money uh, is coming from you know, more than one source. I mean, there's, there's more than one bill that makes it available. Uh, we talked uh, last time uh, in great detail about the CARES Act money uh, in which $1.25 billion was going to be made available for the state. Um, and uh, the proviso, of course, that, uh, that the money had to be spent or used by year's end. Now, uh, you may remember that after <clears throat> the CARES Act went into effect, there was a subsequent act uh, called the Paycheck Protection Program and Healthcare Enhancement Act. And what that did, among other things, uh, was it increased the duration uh, of the, uh, the Payment Protection Act reimbursable period uh, from like uh, uh, six weeks to uh, uh, until the end of the year, I mean, until, until July 31st to the, to the end of this year. Uh, as part of that effort, uh, our senators worked hard and our representatives worked hard for and got within that bill an additional $50 million, um, part of which was going to go, uh, or and it, all of it was supposed to go to necessary expenses to develop or scale up COVID-19 testing, conduct surveillance, trace contacts, and other pandemic-related activities. Okay. Uh, the, the state of Hawaii was getting $50 million for those purposes. It was. And, and this was not lost in our legislature. Uh, we, we talked last time about a bill uh, that divvied up the uh, uh, you know, part of the 1.25 billion. Uh, it, was, it was another bill, Senate Bill 75, which was actually passed a little bit earlier that told us what we we're gonna do uh, with, the, with the 50 million. And it said, that 36 million was gonna to go to the Department of Transportation for thermal screening and related uses, and 14 million was supposed to go to the Department of Health for outbreak control contract tracing and PPE. Okay, so uh, we, we now have uh, 14 million, and, and this bill was signed into law. Okay, so, uh, so we have this money uh, going to Department of Health, and uh, it said uh, that both agencies were supposed to submit a monthly report to the legislature and governor that details all allocations and expenditures. The you know, same, you know, similar language to the uh, to the other appropriation bill that postulated the 1.25 billion. Okay, now um, uh, what what happens is what happened uh, to the 14 million. We're trying to figure that out. What about the 36 million? I went to the Department of Trans. Did it in fact go there? Well, we know that stuff, yeah, I mean, the appropriation went there. We, we know that they, uh, they uh, put in thermal screening equipment. That was in the news. Uh, so at least they did something, they did something with it. And now, the let, question, me, let me take a digression. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, 36 million for the airport and 14 million for all the people in the state. It doesn't seem like the right allocation. That's, but that's just my intuitive reaction. Well, I mean, th there was supposedly other millions of dollars that were being uh, parceled out as well from the 1.25 billion. I mean, the, uh, uh, the Department of Transportation was supposed to get, um, I know, I think uh, 100 million and that got cut down to 70. Uh, but but they still got a lot more. The Department of Health got, you know, uh, you know, a few more millions from that as well. We talked about that last time. Mm -hmm. But, but, but the idea here is that <laughs> there was supposed to be millions and millions of dollars going toward the contract uh, contact tracing effort. Okay, 
And then, and then what happens? Uh, a group of senators raid the department to find out if the contract, the contact tracers actually exist and what do they do? Okay, uh, we, all, we all know what happened after that raid, right? Um, besides it being uh, decried by the governor and by Bruce, Bruce Anderson, Department of Health is being, well, what the heck are you doing? This isn't polite at all. Uh, well, you know, this is, le this is legislative oversight. Okay. Um, they, they also, they, oh, those senators also say that uh, it was okay with Sarah Park. It was discussed with Sarah Park in advance. Um, and effectively, she invited them in. Uh, I don't think Bruce Anderson invited them in, and I don't think David Ige invited them in, but they had at least some some color of of, of request there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's, not, it's not like they, they totally barged in 100% unannounced. Um, but, uh, although if you listen to just Bruce Anderson or, or the governor, uh, you would probably come to a different conclusion. Yeah. So... Um, so, so, so we have uh, like a handful of traces that were found at the at the Department of Health, um, all being, you know, totally beleaguered and overworked, uh, having hundreds of cases assigned to them, and and, and, you know, and admitting uh, to the Hawaii News Now cameras that oh, you know, we can't get through all this in a day. There's no way. Um, so. Uh, the question then becomes, well, uh, why aren't you hiring more people? Like you said you would. You, you ask the, uh, for, for uh, information for the Department of Health. Uh, and, and they may say, oh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get around to answering you when we're good and ready, uh, when operations are, you know, resume no, some normalcy. Uh, but you know, come on, guys, that's not going to happen in the, in, in the foreseeable future. Things, things are not normal. And, and the public wants to know now what the heck is going on. Well, didn't they say they were going to hire hundreds and hundreds of uh, tracers? Um, that, that They recognized the need. This is weeks ago, a month ago. Uh, they recognized the need to have something over 400 of them. Uh, and they were uh, going about their business of hiring them. Um, right. What happened to that? Was that Shibai? Well, we don't know. Uh, I mentioned uh, just a couple of minutes ago, I, I don't know if we were on air at the time or what, but uh, the, the state auditor came up with a report yesterday uh, saying that they were trying to figure out what was going on as well so, so they can report to the legislature and the public if the Department of Health wasn't going to do it, okay? And, and so they went in and they, th they started asking some questions. So they interviewed uh, Bruce Anderson. And, um, and a lot of questions, uh, you, know, he, you know, some he answered, but then, then he says, well, you really have to talk to the, uh, the disease outbreak control division branch chief and the D disease investigation branch chief, you know, who, who, weren't, who weren't at the interview. He's and the then, department head, isn't he? He's the department head, yes. Okay. He's the director, yeah, and 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 it's um, not unprecedented for the director to say, "Well, yeah, you you, you got to talk to my branch chiefs. They they know what they know more of the details of what's going on." Hmm. Okay, and then um, uh, Les Kondo's office, the state auditor's office, tries to schedule a meeting uh, with the uh, with, with the branch chiefs, uh, an interview with them to to, to you know get those questions answered. Uh, the, the day before the interview, um, you know, somebody calls him and says, well, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry, we're too busy. We, we can't do the interview. Um, guys, who is your boss? Who pays your salaries? And I, true, it's not the auditor, uh, but where is your responsibility to the people of the state of Hawaii? The taxpayers, we, we, we are paying uh, through our tax monies, uh, your paycheck. And you need, you need to give, you know, us as taxpayers uh, some answers. What happened? So, well, 
as I said, the, re the report came out yesterday. The, the state auditor didn't get information. So they, they couldn't really report on, uh, on what the heck was going on because they don't know. And so, um, okay, so that's the long and short of it. We don't know where at least the 14 million was supposed to go or where it did go, in fact. Um, where do you think it might have gone? I mean, this is not an insubstantial amount of money. Who knows? It, there, there are just so many uh, black holes that the, that the money could have been squirreled away into. There, there, there are just, you know, so many other things going on at the apartment. Yeah, the apartment is pretty big. Okay. Yeah. You, you think it's fair to assume that, from what we do know, that it did not get to testing and tracing? Well, it's kind of hard to imagine that it went to tracing if there's only a handful of people there and they're hopelessly overworked. Mm -hmm. so um, then the, the and, and, and it gets worse. It gets worse. Um, because, because then... Uh, the uh, the U.S. Congress, uh, who passed those bills, obviously, uh, they they kind of had uh, some some questions too. So on August nineteenth, which which is you know, just a few days ago, there was a letter that was sent to the governor uh, from Representative uh, Anna Issue from California, and she happens to be. Uh, the chair of the subcommittee on health of the House Energy and Commerce Committee. Okay. Which is interested in this subject because they were instrumental in allocating the money. That's right. I mean, uh, these were, these were health related concerns. They're the ones who, who uh, doled out the money and, and uh, representative issues observation was, you know, look guys, Less than two months ago, Hawaii had the lowest number of COVID-19 cases per capita of any state in the nation. But now, we, we, we've kind of flipped 180 degrees. Now, Hawaii has the highest infection rate in the United States. Now, this, is, this is from the letter. Okay. Um, what the heck is going on? I think it's a valid question for the, uh, for the representative to ask. And, uh, you know, and and she, she then goes on to ask for you know information documents, and um, uh, and, and the last question she asks uh, was particularly pointed. I'm going to read this one. She says, "Due to numerous instances of conflicting and false information being released to the public by your Department of Health regarding the number of contact tracers employed and their capabilities." What specifications will you take or spe what specific actions will you take to restore the integrity of the Department of Health? And that's a pointed question. And, 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 and this, is, this is not, you know, Democrats v. Republicans. Right? They're both Democrats. Rep. Eshu is a Democrat. Governor Yee is a Democrat. Uh, so th this is this is not you know interparty rivalry kind of thing. You know th this is this is this is a real concern um, from somebody in Washington who's who's got some responsibility for this. And the concern over the credibility and f false statements made by our Department of Health. Conflicting and false information. Yes. Hmm. That's pretty serious. So, what what is what is happening about that? I mean, is that is, is it stopped there? Um, well, we we do know that subsequent to that, the governor um, kind of uh, reshuffled the team that was uh, front facing on this on this particular issue. Uh, Dr. Park was uh, removed as the front line person, and uh, another. Uh, department head um, was uh, substituted in, in, in her place. I, you know, reporting to uh, Bruce Anderson, of course, but um, but Bruce Anderson is still in charge. 
Governor Sonny. And, and Sarah Park is still there too. And Sarah Park is still there. So why why would the Department of Health give you know conflicting and false information? Why would the governor do such a thing? I mean, the logical possibilities are they don't want to panic the public. Um, they themselves had false or conflicting information, um, or I, I don't know. They they were trying to set up an agenda, a scenario where the public would be intentionally misinformed or confused. I mean, th these are only logical choices, but w why do you think this happened? Well, my, my speculation, and it's only speculation, uh, is that somebody dropped the ball somewhere in the Department of Health. They were supposed to be much further along uh, with the contract uh, contact tracing effort than they actually were. And then uh, there was a cascade of events trying to cover it up. So. One person covers it up, then uh, another person covers up for that person, and the third person covers up for the first two, and uh, and you get a cascade effect like that. Uh, the result being that uh, inf information that was either misleading or false was produced, uh, so that uh, either the public wouldn't worry, or or or, or uh, the the governor's chief of staff wouldn't come down on them, or you know, you know, stuff like that. Um, and, but, but you can't help but thinking that, that there is some kind of cover-up going on, even, at, you know, even at the department's, uh, even at the governor's office level. Uh, because when you, when you read the auditor's report, right, uh, the auditor was informed, you know, before, before that second meeting was supposed to happen, you know, with the with the with the uh, with the branch chiefs, uh, the auditor was informed that there would be an AG present, an attorney general. Um, why? Yeah. Right. I mean, it it says we have some legal issue. We want to have real time advice about how to cope with the questions. But the questions are really fact questions. Why is there a legal issue? Yeah, and, and why is there uh, a, a need to, you know, filter the information at all, you know, coming from one branch of government to another branch of government? Yeah, I have to, I have to say, though, that my, my experience with state government is that deputy attorney generals, attorneys general, are assigned to every meeting you can think of everything and and more than most of the time you ask yourself why do we need a deputy attorney general at this meeting it's like unnecessary and yet they're always there they're always there every board every commission I tell you it's almost it's it's ubiquitous like the sunshine law and i suspect in a lot of boards and commissions the only real reason could be the Sunshine Law, but that's not the case here. This, this was merely a request for information to an agency or a, a sub-agency that had well, the information. Yeah, well, you, you gotta ask, what's the Attorney General gonna do at the meeting? You know, basically basically right. tell, tell, the, tell the speaker to shut up right. you know, at, 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 at specific times if, if, right. the, uh, if, if the, the Attorney General feels the question's out of bounds or whatever. So. Yeah. So it's a means of restricting information. Yes, I, I totally agree. Yeah. So, gee, this is very this is dis disturbing, um, and I wonder if is the public aware of this? Uh, is the public disturbed by it? Certainly, the uh, you know the people who uh, have oversight in the legislature are uh, disturbed by it. We've talked to some of them here on ThinkTech, and they they are disturbed by what happened. But what about the public in general? Well, hopefully, uh, when when news of this show gets out, um, there should be a lot more public attention. Uh, that's that's one reason why we're doing this. Yeah. So let me let me ask you. There's two questions that come to mind, Tom. Uh, one is, um, what what should mm, the governor and the and the Department of Health have been doing to avoid this pickle? They should have been 
um, up front with the public, you know, throughout the course of the process, you know, yes, we're, we, we've hired X number of contact tracers. We're going to place them into service on X, X Y, and Z dates. Uh, well, yeah, we, we, we have a, an issue trying to figure out where they're going to work out from, but um, uh, maybe we put them in the convention center or, or you know, stuff like that. Um, we, you know, we, we get uh, the cooperation of government to help us with that, you know, find, uh, you know, additional resources if resources are needed and what kind of resources are needed. And then, and then we go to it. Mm. <clears throat> this reminds me of an article <clears throat> I saw in Haaretz, which is a, a leading newspaper in, in uh, Tel Aviv. And it had, uh, it had the daily report on COVID in Israel. Obviously, Israel has a problem with COVID also. Um, and it had columns upon columns of information uh, no names, but everything you could print without using names, without violating privacy, about what was going on in Israel over COVID. Uh, if you look at the Department of Health, you, you know you see the number of cases and deaths. Pretty much, that's it. And uh, I even wonder about that. But but query why why can't the state publish the same level of detail here? What what would hurt? What would be, what would be, you know, inappropriate about that? What, what would, what's the reason they, they don't publish that level of detail here? Uh, I think because they're worried that their incompetence will, will be exposed. Okay, now uh, let me let me kind of refresh you back to the auditors' report. They, you know, they're trying to be helpful, and what they did is. Uh, they put at the end of their report some examples of what they are doing in other states. Like uh, in New Jersey, they have a contract tracing dashboard uh, that says, okay, we have uh, 1,612 contact tracers, uh, which is uh, 83 more than last week. Uh, here are the number of cases. Um, here are the number of times we attempted outreach, uh, and the the uh, recipient didn't take the call twenty percent of the time, or whatever it was. You know, this where does this go? I, I think one way, one place it goes. Don't you? That <clears throat> if you tell the people what's going on, give them that level of detail, which doesn't hurt you at all. In fact, it probably builds confidence for you to give them that level of detail. It means you're transparent. You're willing to discuss what you're doing. Um, that that people can people can make their own personal decisions with more data in mind. And you know we have a problem in Hawaii about complacency and and failure to abide by the rules as they are promulgated by the state. Um, I think if people had more information about this, they would be more likely to determine an appropriate level of safety for themselves and more likely to abide by the rules. And thus we would have lower number of cases and deaths. Don't you agree with that? Yeah, no, I, I think uh, people want to know uh, what is going on with their tax dollars, what, 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 they, what they have bought with their tax dollars, what kind of efforts have been taken and if, if people can see, oh, geez, you know, look at all of the, this effort that governor, the government is spending uh, to keep this, this virus under control, uh, then maybe we better do the same thing. We better keep it under control as well, and let's do our part. I, mean, I, I, I would think that would help. You know, the other thing that comes to mind is that the university was supposed to train um, the tracers. Um, but what I've heard is that the, the training they got at the university was on some theoretical level with um, a level of candidate a trainee um, that, that was not, not appropriate. That was you know, too much education for, for the job. Uh, and then when they were trained or about to be trained, the Department of Health said, wait a minute, we have to have our own training. Your training is, is all theoretical. And so when they finish your training in, in Manoa, uh, we have to train them again. 
um, which I, that is a, just an example of inefficiency galore. And uh, I don't know how far that got, but that, that may explain some of the fire drill notion about this. The, the, the second question I wanted to ask you though, Tom, is you know, we have a, a crisis of credibility or we should, or we will, or all three. And my question to you is, is how do you think we should resolve that? How, what, what advice would you give the governor and, and the director of health um, to, to rebuild credibility in accordance with the, you know, the concerns expressed by that Congresswoman from California? What should they be doing now? Stop snowing people. Three words, stop snowing people. Give people, you know, the correct answers, give them true information. Let, let them know that you are sincerely working on their interest, you know, in their interests, what, what you are doing. Uh, and, 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 and stop trying to restrict the information flow. It doesn't work. It has, it has these effects of eroding confidence and, uh, and, and, and increasing the, the distrust of government. Hmm. This, this goes not only to um, the Department of Health's uh, efforts here, but uh, also it was recently reported that the Associated Press asked for some information from, uh, from, from, the, from the governor's office and basically was, was told, well, you know, uh, we'll, we'll get around to you when we get around to you, when, when operations are normal again. This is a, an attitudinal problem then. I think it is. If, you know, if the culture is, you know, uh, shut up, we're not going to tell you anything, how do you expect the people to have confidence in it? Right. And if they don't have confidence in you, they're not going to follow your proclamations. They're not going to take you seriously. But let's assume, Tom, let's assume that you write this up and maybe others pick up on it. Let's assume that the community becomes aware from from this discussion today and from other sources, including anything you might write up, what should what should the man or woman on the street do about it? Uh, if you know, if it's me, I would be very concerned that I wasn't getting enough information, and I need more information to sort of develop um, you know a perception about what is going on in this state, how it compares with other states, uh, what can be done, what should be done by government. Uh, what are the policies and initiatives that should be adopted to save us? Because right now we're we're in terrible shape. We're we're a hot what do you call it a hot spot, and we're not doing well. Just as that California congresswoman said, um, what should the man in the street or the woman in the street do, knowing about this? Uh, what I would say is, you know, call your senator representative, say you have concerns. Uh, and, you know, hopefully uh, when the senators or representatives phones start ringing off the hook, uh, they'll be motivated to do something. And, uh, uh, and hopefully they can, uh, or, or call the governor or call the Department of Health. You know, when, when, pe when people's phones start ringing off the hook, they're motivated to do something. And uh, hopefully it'll be for the better. We can do better. We can do better on every level on being transparent and, and on hiring and training uh, tracers and uh, actually tracing and thus actually suppressing the curve, which we need desperately to do. And also making people feel confident that the government is doing the right thing, taking the right steps. Well, thank you so much for talking to us about this, Tom. This is a very important discussion and I, and I hope it goes somewhere and I hope the phones do ring off the hooks, as you say. Tom Yamachika, president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Thank, Thank you, you for having me on the show. Aloha.